In this video, I want to talk a little bit about crude oil. Crude oil has been on the move today. We've had a nice uh, two or three days in a row where this market's actually three or four days. This week's been pretty good in crude oil. We've had some pretty good moves in here. I oftentimes like to watch the uh, daily chart and see where the big moves are, uh, see where we're getting some volatility in the market. As we come into the close of this uh, January contract, you can see that we're getting a little bit of volatility in here. That's why it's been good day trading. When markets go sideways during these time frames like this, this is definitely not a time we're going to be wanting to, to day trade these markets. We want to be trading these markets when they're moving and shaking and making some trends. Uh, we get a little bit of sideways markets in there. Those generally pretty rotten time frames to be uh, day trading. So we have to be careful. Watch these things. I usually uh, pay close attention to the, the longer term charts to find out when the markets have some volatility in them. We're getting some good volatility in here. So let's drop down to a shorter term time frame. The first thing we need to realize is that big red line right there tells us we need to get out of this contract, move into the next. So this is January contract. We're going to dump the January contract, move over into the February contract. So this is the February contract crude oil. Let's lock drop down to the range bar six. And this is kind of what we're seeing this morning. You can see this is about 8.30 right in here off this left hand side of the chart. Coming in here, this first arrow came in about 9.30. And you can see that this was a nice little trend line coming in here with this nice break. Now remember, these blue lights, these are mathematically calculated trend lines. And so we want to look for the breaking of the trend lines to take these positions. Now I have got the uh, bulls and bears tightened up here to 80. I want to show you something. You can move these things. A lot of people don't think you can move them. We, we start off with 72 and you'll notice the difference in 72 uh, of where the arrows come in. Now you remember that the bulls and bears system is designed on the Fibonacci ruler and this is where we're getting our, our ruler in here and we come in here. This is the sweet spot. The reason this is yellow is because it's going through the yellow uh, rolling sweet spot of the Fibonacci ruler. That's why we turn yellow. We have na uh, neutral, we have bullish, and we have bearish. Of course these arrows are indicating that uh, this is where we're breaking of that trend line or we're breaking of the neutral zone going into the bullish trend. Now that's a, a traditional method of coming in here. If we come in a little bit tighter and we start pulling these arrows out, you can watch this. Watch, I'm on 72. We can pull it up to 80. A lot of people don't think you can move this slider. That slider's there for a purpose. It's there to tighten these things up, loosen them up, depending on what the market's doing. It's what I call tuning in the market. And so when we've got a nice active market, you can tune these things in. Now this is sensitivity of 80, and you notice the difference in the arrows. Watch this. If we come in here and bring this up to 90, we can even bring that up to 90, and look where it brings those arrows right up there to the very peaks and valleys of these markets. It tightens it up and makes it look nice on there. Uh, when you got a nice trending market, you can do that. If you're getting a sideways market, this will give you a lot more whipsaw, so keep that in mind. Uh, when the market's starting to trend like this and we have a lot of volatility, you can really tighten that sensitivity up on the bulls and bears system, which is going to give you some earlier entry triggers on these uh, arrows and also show you this rolling formation that we're seeing here today on crude oil. So I just want to make sure you realize that you can move those sliders. A lot of people get scared to move and set the change the settings within the indicators, but those are there for that purpose. So we're going to draw this again, another trend line in here. Again, remember that the, the blue lights are mathematically calculated trend lines. We want them to match with our other trend lines. We want to get this all coming together at the same location. Now I'm going to come in here with our ABC pattern in here. Now watch this, just off the bottom of this trend, up to the rally. That's the B point, down to the C point. We draw that in there, and look at this. This is the beautiful setup right in here. We have our trend line that's coming in, our blue light trend line coming in. We have this all coming in at the 23.6% level. When those all converge right there, you got a confirmation. That should be a good trade right in there. That's a beautiful setup. We got the arrow from the bulls and bears. Everything's set up for the next long position coming in. And that's where we like to see that. We like to see that ABC pattern in there with a nice projection up coming in at 23.6 with the with the with all this crossover happening all at the same location right here at 23.6 after the market started to rally and move. If you get that, that's a great place to put your, your your, your intercept order on that blue light, take a long position off there, put your stop back behind one bar behind the entry bar, uh, and then cut your loser short and let your winners run. If we're wrong, we want to just get right back out. But if we're right, it should be decisive. We want to make sure it's a decisive move that goes decisively in our favor. If it doesn't decisively go in our favor and it starts to wander sideways in there or even come against us a little bit, just get out. It's not a trade we want to be in anyway. Even if it does take off, so what? We'll catch another one. We only want to be in decisive moves, decisive markets, and decisive trades. All right. So now as we come in here, we can see that we got this sort of reversal in here. We got another arrow as this market comes down 
uh, we can see that we have another trend line that's coming in here and we've got this nice little ABC pattern again if we come off of this one here we got a nice little projection now this is getting a little advanced on going from the C point being higher than the B point or the A point but this is projecting off this top here we got the ABC pattern projecting lower to 161.8 again you got your 23.6 percent level in here with the crossover of your trend line we're getting a little busy in here with some of these trend lines but you can see that nice little trend line for that reversal up there off that ABC we probably missed this one here because we're actually probably looking for a third drive high right we like to look for those three drive patterns so let me delete this out of here and show you that we'd probably be actually missing this downtrend right here simply because we'd be looking for that to be a counter trend for the next wave up off of this uh, this uh, this uh, Elliott wave pattern here we'd be looking for X one two three four and then looking for that fifth wave up right we didn't get that fifth wave up how do we know when this uh, this mark has been invalidated for that fifth wave up well we get an arrow in here first of all and then the market starts to break decisively and starts to move down uh, it's difficult sometimes to get that confirmation but there's a little ABC pattern in here oftentimes you'll get that a little bit stronger but you see this little ABC pattern in there there at that point that market makes that kind of little jig jog right there sometimes the blue light will break for you once that happens you realize that the market is bro broken and it's going the other direction we didn't quite get that strong of a signal because this market's very decisively moving in the direction uh, back and forth just through a nice swing trade pattern today but uh, oftentimes that's what we'll get is a little break there at that point you can realize hey we're we're not going to be going long anymore we're going to take another short position and you can oftentimes capture that location and take that next leg down on that little ABC top formation it's a little bit tight sometimes but uh, oftentimes will turn out to be a good trade for you so this is how you can tell that this is an invalidated move come in here with a little ABC start to rally on the back downside again watch those blue lights they're a real key to telling you what's going to happen so we're going to come in here and delete these and you can see the next trade up one more time we're just going to come in here with just a nice little trend line and just draw that up there and again notice how it breaks right at exactly the arrow and the blue light system crossing at the same time. So this is where we want to be looking and of course never want to forget about our indicators because the indicators are going to be very big help telling us when we're in an oversold and overbought region you're going to notice that these are down here at the same locations when these reaching the down into these oversold regions overbought regions on the stochastics indicator again up here to the top you got this up here to the top we want to be paying very close attention to that we got the momentum uh, and we also want to be looking for the divergence between the markets and again uh, higher high here lower high here in the indicator on the momentum and we got a lower high here this is div this is convergence in here these are both uh, a high and then a lower high indicating that this market is not going to trend up and continue the higher trend probably going to get an additional downtrend in here so we can anticipate probably some downtrend moves in the next in in the next little while here on uh, crude oil due to the divergence that we're getting or the convergence that we're getting here on the indicator so I always want to pay attention to the indicators and sometimes I forget to point those out but those are key points of turning points that we want to be very conscientious of as we're looking through the markets going through these uh, moves in the very short time frame okay it's game time time to learn something new what is convergence in divergence one when two trends in the market converge two when two trends in the market diverge three when a technical indicator converges or diverges from the trend of the market. All of the above, or number five, none of the above. Convergence is when market prices move in the same direction as the technical indicator, creating higher highs on the price chart and correlating higher highs in the indicator. This is generally considered a sign of a strong trend, and a continuation of the trend is anticipated. Divergence is when a market is making higher highs on the price chart while the indicator is making lower highs. This is generally considered a sign of weakness and a reversal of the trend is anticipated. In a typical three drive pattern, it's common to see two converging higher highs, wave one and wave two, with a third higher wave in the market while finding a lower third wave in the indicator. Again, this is the anticipation that the three drive Elliott wave pattern has been exhausted and a reversal is anticipated. Many oscillating indicators will display convergence and divergence, but the momentum indicator, in my opinion, seems to be the best at providing these types of signals.